Gold Squad TV, what up? Another one, another one. I don't know why people are making such a big deal over this Dwayne Wade, Paul Pierce stuff. Listen, I love both players. Paul Pierce is my favorite player. So I'm going to sound biased, but I can't front on Wade's first four or five years in the league, especially when he won his title. Can't deny that dude was a was amazing. He was flash before the injury started come catching up to him by year six, seven. Especially that one year in 09 where he had to carry that team before Le- this was a year before LeBron got there. And he went nuts. He went crazy. He used to rock those converses that I used to love before he went and changed brands. Um can't deny Wade's talent. Defensively he's one of the greatest ever one of the greatest two guards, at least top three or four two guards of all time. Um, Paul Pierce was a monster in his own right. See, a lot of people don't remember Paul Pierce bought a team to the Eastern Conference Finals by himself with a kind of past their prime Antoine Walker, but him by himself. And you have guys like Eric Strickland, a past prime Kenny Anderson, um, Eric Williams on your squad going against the New Jersey Nets who ended up going to back-to-back finals. Although the East wasn't that strong. I mean, let's be honest, it's still a feat. Paul Pierce, every time he got to the playoffs, even when he lost, he balled out. Um, he always balled out. Y'all know him from the Big Three era, but the reality is before that, he was a monster. Those two years that they... They pretty much didn't put anything around him, and they were like last place um, in the East. I mean, this man was having some of his best years. Um, this dude used to get up. He's a dunk on dudes. A lot of people don't even realize, you know, they look at him for his craftiness, but in that mid-range, you know, a lot of those clutch plays, but they don't look at him for being a dunker. This dude was dunking on dudes or cramming on them. Maybe not on Vince Carter level, but he was, he was cramming on dudes. He you know, catch you sleeping. Um, Paul Pierce was an all-star damn near 10, 11 t- times in the league. Let's not shun that at all. He's a one-time NBA champion. Should have been multiple times, but, you know, injuries happen, right? And I think people remember him less in a good light for two reasons. One, the Celtics are a very hated franchise by most casual NBA fans. Do not like the NBA. Do not like the Boston Celtics. Um, two that actually multiple reasons that two that big three team was not very liked outside of new england that that team was not very liked in three let's be honest towards the end when he was ring chasing you know outside of the washington year we had it was great that year um those clipper years were pretty bad you know he wasn't really he still could ball I, i felt like they didn't play him enough but he wasn't at that point, he wasn't really taking the game seriously the way he used to anymore. But him saying that he's better than Dwayne Wade, it's not a far stretch. It's not to say that he is. Historically, Dwayne Wade will go up higher in the list than Paul Pierce. It's not a debate. But I can't knock Paul Pierce for feeling that way. Paul Pierce, in his own right, was an offensive dynamo. That dude was hard to stop. Slow like molasses, but he rocked you to sleep. The, that step back mid ranger he had was damn near unstoppable to stop. And the dude had a back. He just knew how to give the game what it needed. Even late in his career, when he was in Boston, in the years that we were kind of losing in the first round towards the end before Paul Pierce and Garnett got traded, he was still putting up games where he was putting up 30, 40 on certain games. You know what I mean? Stats might not really show it overall for the regular season, he averaged by 18, 19. But, you know, Paul Pierce is one of those players where the stats is deceiving. You know what I mean? And we're in an era where stats mean everything. Unfortunately, fucking best player in the world that everybody seems to keep worshipping, who hasn't been the best player in the world for a very long time, um, Bron Bron, seems to think that numbers is going to make you the greatest ever, when it doesn't, you know. Anyway, you know, Paul Pierce do with LeBron James and went head-to-head with him. You know, multiple times. Even cost him a chance to get to the finals a couple times. Um, So let's not act like Paul Pierce is a slouch. Is he better than Wade? Individually, I can't say that because Wade had better defense. 
But Paul Pierce wasn't a slouch defensively. He just never made any NBA first-team defensive teams. Um, Paul Pierce used to give Kobe Bryant problems on both ends. You know, on both ends. Kobe would tell you that it was difficult to defend Paul because he was big, slow, and strong. But he had guard, guard-like skills for a small forward. You know, he's even said it in his book. So let's not act like Paul Pierce is a mad slouch. Like he's not a great player from this generation. Will he go down as a you know top five, top ten talent? No. Let's not act like Paul Pierce is a slouch. This is ridiculous and it's bugged out. But it's even bigger thing to me is like okay, put Paul Pierce and Wade aside. They're both legends, and I salute them both. Um, both NBA legends, no doubt. Right. I don't get why Giannis Haslam has to feel like he needs to open his mouth about this, like, in a very vile matter. I mean, that's his mans. I get it. Wade was your homie. But it's just like, yo, dude, like, act like Paul Pierce went to school. You would knock him down with a couple of those jumpers and those, you know, mid-range jumpers. You were never really a great player, dude. You were a role player that would come off the bench every now and then towards the end of your career. I mean, you played a good part in those early Miami teams, but for the most part, you were just a goon. I don't understand how you think you have an opinion outside of being biased towards your mans. That said, it is what it is. I don't understand why people make such a big deal with the debates. See, unfortunately, we can't appreciate greatness because every time it's a damn debate. You know, the barbershop shit's gotten out of hand. You know, now it's like all these shows are debate shows. Everything's a debate, so we just want to debate everything. We act like, you know certain dudes weren't as great as they were for their time. Like, I'm not sitting here and acting like Scottie Pippen was better than Michael, by no means. Let's not act like Scottie Pippen, as bitter as he is, was a slouch. Scottie Pippen was a great player. One of the all-time best defenders in the league. Was he better than Mike? No. But was he ever on the level of a Mike? No. But he's second tier for sure, and you can't, there's no shame in that. I don't, I don't understand why everything has to always be a debate. It's like with hip-hop. Like, you know, it's what it is. At the end of the day, whatever I say is going to matter. It's like even with hip-hop. Everything's got to be a top five or a top ten. Like, I don't really be debating stuff like that. It's disrespectful to the people that came before and after. There's mad people that made contributions to the game. And they might not ever really make a top 75 list or a top 50 list that the NBA decides to go and put out there. But, you know, they're still legends. Vince Carter didn't make the 75. And Vince Carter, to me, for at least seven or eight years before he decided to become a role player, was one of the best players in the league. So, you know, not, not to mention one of the most popular. He had a lot of big shots, dunked a lot of balls. And this man was a, was a Don. You know what I mean? So it's like... I don't get it. I don't get why everything has to be such a debate. That said, I'm not really tripping over the Paul Pierce Wade thing. Paul Pierce has a right to feel how he feels. That's Paul Pierce, bro. That's the truth. In Flash, Dwayne Wade is an all-time great. He has a right to feel how he feels. You know what I mean? That's that's him. You know, he won three championships. One by himself and two with, you know, pretty much, you know, LeBron, but you can't deny that dude's impact. Let let both be great. Just let let both be great. They're both legends. You know what I mean? They're both legends in a category. No one's sitting here saying one's better than the other. To me, I just think that's corny at the end of the day. You know, both are legends. Both are going to be, both are Hall of Famers. Come on, man. Let's just let this shit go and just Let's really celebrate these dudes for what they brought to the table. I mean, let's be honest, too. Let's be real. It's never going to matter because you're never going to see those two go one-on-one. At their advanced ages, you don't really want to see that anyway. Like in their prime, you didn't really see them go one-on-one. They didn't really guard each other very young, often. You know what I mean? So, anyway, I know I'm rambling. I'm an NBA fan. and you know, I'm a basketball fan. I love college. I love Pro hell, I, I would love watching ball standing quarter if I could watch it. But yeah, ultimately at the end of the day, man, you know, we can't diminish one to make other one look good. 
you know, Paul was kind of bugged out for saying what he said, but at the same time, he's supposed to feel that way. He's a competitor. I couldn't imagine Michael Jordan sitting there and being like, yo, you know, I'm not a competitor. Like, you know, when you're on that court, you think you'd be anyone. Anyway, Gold Squad TV, leave a like, subscribe, let me know what you guys think.